Hello everybody and welcome back to LA Noir. The last time we played we did the white shoe slaying. Um Let's go ahead and check our cases real quick. Make sure I haven't missed any newspapers. Okay, good. Um good, no missed papers. Um five stars. Um of course I still do have to go back and uh do that very first case driver's seat but uh we're moving on so we're gonna be moving on to let's see here we had a cutscene last time we're moving on to the studio secretary murder We're at a train yard. Another drunk ass bitch. And another guy with a tire iron. Seems everybody gets murdered the same in the city. Yes, I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Counselor. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring, a matching engagement ring. Sound familiar? Deirdre Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the <laughs> railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. 40-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. All right. First thing first, pawnbroker. Another body and Deirdre Muller's ring. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. Exactly. Did you get that book of riddles shoved up your ass, though? <laughs> Is that what your old man paid college tuition for? You can drive. All right. Exactly are we going? We're going to the pawnbroker. It's the first place we're going. That's the cop from the newspapers. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Let's go, Rusty. God's sake. You've got to admit, this is looking odd. Anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Cole, Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's groundkeeper. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sakes. And he always maintained he was set up. Well, I guess we're gonna go take a look at this jewelry. Of course, the last case, she didn't have any jewelry she got taken off of her. All right, well, here we are. How can I help you boys? FBI. Oh, I'm the police, sorry, never mind. Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? 50 bucks. Try another number. 20? Try 10. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. All right, so this is the wedding ring. Does this mark mean anything? 22 carat. Oh, mark. Gives you an idea of the quality. All right, and the engagement ring. What's this mark here? Maker's mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Thanks for the tip. Right. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? He goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 
15 Poland Street, London, Tulare County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? I'm not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. Of course. Be in touch, Mr. Bremner. <clears throat> All right. Well, you can take your rings back. We're not keeping them. You're behind the wheel. All right. So he's in the drive. Where are we headed? To the rail yard. We're gonna head to the rail yard and see the new bo the new body. We have a problem. We could have the local troopers check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. The purpose having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. How do you figure that one? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. If the Dahlia letters are genuine, then the man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Deirdre Muller. And how do we prove that, Phelps? Skipper ain't gonna like this one bit. Well? We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. Technically, the way you would actually do it is that you would need to connect every piece of evidence you had to every piece of evidence you had in the Deirdre Muller case as being the same. You boys ready? Plus, Follow you me. would need to prove that the jewelry was connected to Elizabeth Short. We keep this development of the race under a hat until we speak with the captain. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. Got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. But then again, Elizabeth Short had more... She had things the other bodies didn't have. Like her mouth cut from ear to ear. Heart, isn't it? Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called the den. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Why? Keep an eye on both of them. It's because they're black, right? Yep. We're living in that age, of course. All right, so first things first. She's not naked. That's our first thing. And she hasn't been strangled with rope either. Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell. But it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Yeah. Huge hit to the eye. Ring stripped from the finger. Another missing ring. It certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. But not... Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. But, of course, she hasn't been degloved, so the ring wasn't that forcefully removed from her finger. Um, it wasn't removed with anything like pliers or anything. I would say he just ripped it off, but nothing on the other hand. Uh, and of course, she has no... She's not naked, so she's not fitting any of the other MO. Alright, so we have a list. Shopping list. This is a chit for personal oh, items. Oh, never mind. Booze. It's an angle worth investigating. Yeah. Oh, it's just a shopping list for whatever she needs. Clothes, makeup, statuette, bowling pin. Bowling pin? Hair... Oh, she probably hits people with it. Hairbrush, three photo frames, plain bed sheets, pillow, bedroll, small suitcase, and two large suitcases. Uh, we have a... Uh, oh, okay. Phelps, uh, can you switch back to the other stuff, please? All of a sudden, I can't... There we go. Uh, we have a matchbook. Maybe someone at Mensch's will remember. Mensch's bar. Okay. And then we got the purse. Keystone we Film Company. Lot and see what they know about her. She That's worked in legal. Call. Keystone Studio Lot closed back in 41. Oh. And we have a piece of paper. 
Oh, it's a letter. Dear Evelyn, I hope this letter finds you in a better way than uh, than when we last parted. Bitter words were exchanged. You had taken too much liquor, and we both know how, what that makes you become. But I'm not writing to harass and accuse. I am writing to apologize. I was heartbroken seeing what had become of my little girl and what she's doing to herself. You are destroying your body and your soul with liquor, Evelyn, and it is harder for me to watch than you can imagine. But only God Almighty above us has the right to judge, so I beg your forgiveness. I've been in contact with a sanitarium here in Connecticut on your behalf. They say your condition is an illness, Evelyn, and that it can be treated. You only need to check yourself in. It will not, and then it's ripped off. So it was. It's only half the letter. Uh, probably a dad. Maybe. Kind of sounds like. I mean, my little girl sounds like a, a sentiment that a dad would use. Because typically a mother would use something like sweetie stuff like that. Okay. So first things first. Um. Well, first things first. Let's go ahead and talk. Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving <laughs> and seemed to be in a bad way. What time was this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your details? I have, sir. Thank you. You can go now. Okay. So let's talk to the other fucker. Was apparently laying on top of her. Detective Phelps, LAPD homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. <laughs> I love Turn Rusty. Out your pockets, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. Punch. Rusty's just that kind of dude. Classic Carmine. Yep, the same kind of lipstick has been used to write on a lot of the other victims' bodies. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No, I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop! <laughs> Don't hit him. <laughs> Uh, let him hit him. Interference with the evidence. <laughs> you uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. Yeah, I think he's telling the truth on that. I don't think that... Plus, he already turned out his pockets. Did you take any money? It wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick and her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. Discovery of victim's body. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. Yeah, you seem a little shady, though. What are you hiding? Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is going to look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I could tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think <laughs> a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine. <laughs> Clyde, you get this sack of shit into a cell. I'll deal with him later. Sure, <laughs> Rusty. <laughs> oh, he really has that pent up aggression. He needs to get out. <laughs> Might as well hit a, a, ne a necrophiliac. Operator, give me R&I. Never mind. 47. This is a police phone, I just realized. <laughs> you don't need to do that. How can I help, detective? I need an address on Levine's Liquor. Closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, detective. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks. Okay. Well. There we have it. So let's see here. Can you drive to this one? We're going to go to Levine's exactly liquor store. We'll head to the liquor store first and then we'll head to the bar. 
read that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I read about that. Those people are starving. They can't do that. They want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. It's true they do. Really? I guess that's okay, then. <laughs> Armies can't fight without food. You spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds will win in China. Watch and your they bow. did. You know what you're saying? And they did, though, Rusty. The people of this country overthrew a king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they're starving? The communists won China. Did they not? Oh, I guess it's okay then. You hear those damn Chinese are selling the food we're sending them? He gets so bent out of shape, and then as soon as you explain, he's like, oh, never mind. What can I do for you? LAPD, Phelps and Galloway. We're making inquiries into the murder of Evelyn Summers. Evelyn? She's dead? You knew Evelyn Summers, Mr. Robbins? Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff here. Can you show us, please? Sure. Come this way. You got some fine stock here, Mr. Robbins. You know, you let us take some for the road, this case might get solved a lot quicker. Oh, my God. You don't need to extort joking, the man. Mr. Robbins. Yeah. She kept a bed here. But I probably shouldn't have let her. An alcoholic in a liquor store. That was never going to work out, was it? <laughs> we'll take a look around. All right. Well, uh, I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. Black. There's that bowling pin. Rollins Bowling. Rollins Bowling Alley. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink in her spare time. Rawlings. I know that place. Corner of 9th and Grand. Ooh, ooh, a lot of cops ooh, bowl there on ooh. Tuesday nights. Okay. Statue. What exactly did Evelyn work in the pictures? 1938 Keystone Films. She worked in legal copyrights for music. Oh, she's one of those assholes. Okay. She wasn't always such a loner. Friends. Evelyn was reading Aristotle. Aristotle. Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was her need to drink. Oh, oops. I can investigate further. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. Okay. What? What about that thing? Whatever. Oh, where is this? Another. Assuming Evelyn is the one on the right there. All right, Robbins. Care to answer some questions? Contact with the victim. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things? She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Seems like the truth. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. <laughs> she said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Typical alcohols by <laughs> Were you and Devil and close booze for Robin? other people too. How many people will be sad she's gone? I'll be one of the few. He does seem reasonably distraught. We got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her staying here. 
Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. Oh, so it was her. Mo so it was her mother that sh that. Uh, to be honest, wrote that letter. Have, to have a good reason to want to get back on. All right, knowledge of this Grosvenor, spelled with you weird, know a friend of silent Evelyn's letters by the name of McCaffrey. Not personally. But do you know of him? Oh, he's kind of looking down a little bit. Uh, I might. I think I might doubt him. Uh, yeah. We're struggling oh, good. for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. From what I gather, the feeling was far from mutual. He seems to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Right. Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. You think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Sure. Evelyn never hurt anybody. It's up to herself. All right, see you later. You know right, the way. You can drive. We're going to Minch's bar. Where are we headed? So we're headed to Minch's bar. We're gonna check that place out. Maybe we can pick up uh, some stuff from the BT. What a great little score piece this is. Oh, sh shout out to the tobacconist over there. Drink, fellas. Phelps, Galloway, homicide. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Match. Evelyn Summers? What is it now? <laughs> She's dead. Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? Uh, a bunch of these guys. Ask around. Yeah, yeah the living rough being the, the old term for homeless. You a friend of Evelyn Summers? Who's asking? Very cute. You know who's asking. I know my rights. You don't have it. Answer the question. Evelyn mooches for drinks. I don't have any time for that. Was that so hard? Keep writing me, copper. Yeah, keep writing. You're gonna go down to the fucking jail, bud. What's your oh, this, name? This guy looks suspicious. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Oh, Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? Shit. I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers? and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. This guy is going to be a big fat liar, I can already tell. Criminal history. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? I bet he does. Nothing serious. Oh, I doubt that I've very much. I've had a much. few skirmishes. Oh, he's getting a doubt. You want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes, strikes, workers' rights, that kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. Relationship with the victim. You say you barely knew Evelyn? Yeah, that's yes, a lie. That is correct. Yeah, he's lying flat out, because we have the book. You're lying, McCaffrey. You look down your nose at Evelyn you knew her and you have some idea of what happened I hope you're holding aces I'm telling you again I barely knew the woman you're right I am holding aces I'm holding a big fat four set of aces why would you lend her your book on metaphysics if you only knew her in passing yeah There's more than that a renaissance man like yourself lending his books to his acolytes she hounded me about that goddamn book. And then she lifts it from my apartment and lies to my face that she didn't take it. 
as if she could even comprehend any of it. I saw her go into a hotel with Tiernan last night. They had Who? booze in a paper bag. He's your man. Is he really? Thank you for the information, Mr. McCaffrey. Tiernan, huh? All right. Uh, you got a phone I can use? Can I use this phone? No. Okay. All right. You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? To the bowling alley, Rusty. That's where we're going. We are gonna go throw some pins down. Oh great, what are they calling about? What? Eleven King. A message from Captain Donnelly. Return to Central. Go to. Eleven King. En route. God damn it! Let's not keep the man waiting, Phelps. Son of a bitch. We're on the goddamn case. I'm about to go to the bowling alley. You call my ass back here for what? Probably about the damn jewelry. The captain is downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. Oh, fucking damn it. It's another letter, isn't it? Another letter. Another letter showed up. Guaranteed. If Pinker and Carruthers are down here, it's definitely something new. What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Muller cases. Which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence uh, is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycats. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, Cartel Classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Yeah, but they don't. Some of them are still clothed, though. Lipstick message. That's true. Technically, See? you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick, but she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What? What did it say? You sure you want to know, Ray? Yeah. As far as we can be sure, it said cunt BD. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, Phelps. You're married, so yours is mortgage. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at, pay all. at all. Yeah. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case, but it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep this under your hat for now. And to follow up on Evelyn Summers, I want daily reports. Okay, well, then, Carruthers, why don't you go lift up Evelyn Summers' dress and see if there's a goddamn note before I leave here? So if I leave no, here, no, you're no, not no, calling no, me back! the Summers case. Get an address for McCaffrey. He'll have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside. All right. Let's get uh yeah. Let's get the address for McCaffrey. Still need to go to the bowling alley. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, one two four seven. I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor with an S. Grosvenor McCaffrey. All right, see? Apartment 6, 126 Yale Street, between Ord and Alpine. Thank I think his name is spelled like Gross, Grossvenor. Grossvenor. I'm calling him Grossvenor. Grossvenor! So what, you want to... Oh, so now I'm driving, Rusty. You just decided to sit in the car. All right. Guess I'm driving. Let me pose a question. Depends. What you got to do with? Still want to go to the morals. morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slammer ever found out. Oops. It's meant to hit the brakes. Hey man, don't even try it. Right away here. Can't do it. I'm busy. I got murder. Murder's everywhere. 
Murders, literally murders everywhere. Move! Oh, you what? son of a Will bitch! You? He like saw me coming, so he's like, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna stop. Oh, we're going on the sidewalk! Please, help the siren. There, happy? There, had enough of the siren. <laughs> All right. Whoa! There we go. <laughs> I'm a wild driver, but we're gonna get there okay. C plus his car is fine. Is there a bowling mini game I can participate in? No. Look at those lanes. Perfectly waxed. Hello, Rusty. Two on your usual lane? I'm Detective Feltz. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? We're conducting an investigation, ma'am. <laughs> Do you know the name Evelyn Summers? We're a oh, conducting an investigation. Maybe it could be Jimmy's friend. Jimmy? James that... Tierney. Oh! He's a pin setter. One day he introduced me to a lady after work. Stuck in my mind because she was much older, too old for him. Where can we find you? She was in her forties. He'll be oh. hopping around the lanes toward the back. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. Oh fuck, that's him right there. That's him right there! Woo! Get out of here, you son of a bitch! I saw him! That was him! You motherfucker! Tiernan! LAPD! You already saw a bitch! FBI! <laughs> I don't want to be the LAPD anymore. I just want to be the FBI. CIA! That guy drives a pretty badass car yeah. for a pen setter! Yeah, let's just let's take a car. What are you waiting for? Get after him! Well, I we got, might gotta go faster get... if we weren't carrying the extra weight. Whoa, what? Auto These enthusiasts. These are flashy cars to be parked oh. outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast-living individual with money to burn. Ooh, buddy! Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. I'm trying to shoot out his tires. Oh, come on, you <laughs> son of a bitch! Oh, shit! Another runner. Well, at least we've got a suspect. Why do they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to land it. You know, your theories are not airtight by any means. Oh, dear. Belt, you oh. gotta get me closer. Dude, I... Listen, Hit I'm it. still recovering. Clean this asshole off the road. Oh, my if this God. This is a killer. We can at least get him for reckless Hey, look at the Clifton. Unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. Going through Jesus. the square. I hope the people see him in time to get out of the way. What if they run because someone's setting them up? Because they feel like the deck is stacked against them. I don't make up ridiculous oh, stories for the detective. Leave that to the perp's imagination. Oh, looks like oh, we're going dear. into the tunnels. God damn it, he'll kill himself. It's all right, as long as he doesn't oh. kill this, I'm okay with it. Holy shit! I hit him into that fucking tram. Put he's your dead. hands in the air. There's no way he survived. He's dead. He he fucking head on into that tram. No, at, back then they didn't have no fucking airbags. There was no safety. Those he was he's dead. There's there was no way he would have survived that. Been killed instantly. Would have smashed his head on the steering wheel. Hands. He would have Doctor Strange that shit. His hands would have went through the fucking dashboard of his car. Would have ruined his hands forever. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to drive anymore, Rusty. You can drive. Uh, McCaffrey's Bye. apartment. Let's turn that place upside down, shall we? Right. <laughs> they can't believe he survived that. I barely survived that crash. 
Shout out to Wally's Meats. I like, I like, uh, I've always loved this, like, ancient Roman, like, pattern of tile. If I could just have an entire house with floors like that, I'm, I'm fine. Number six. McCaffrey is in apartment six. We gotta just bust it every time and say a different shit. I'm gonna be the NSA this time. The NSA. NSA, your see, we gotta practice. NSA, your place is bugged. We have a warrant for your arrest. That's seven. That's eight. Are you serious? Oh, five and six. I'm I'm a dumbass. I, I literally saw five and six, and I thought it was going that way because of the. The letters were on the right side. All right. NSA, open up! Doesn't look like anybody's home. Terrible shame. Means there's nobody to let us in. You want to do the honors, Phelps? I done unplugged my mic. <laughs> I didn't even hear what he said, but I read the subtitles. All right. I don't think so. Anatomy of power. Oh my god, it's the other half of that fucking letter! Torn from the letter we found beside the body. At the very least, I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. No shit. Very to the scene. Circumstantial. Circumstantial. Like he's, I mean, come on. Oh, oh, absolutely, this is our guy. He Got from the bowling alley. He said he didn't know her. And we have the book. Let's see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. No shit. Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? Yeah, down I'm at the... his neighbor. At the... Is he in trouble? Look, lady. Cafe, the bar we found him. in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. Surely we can ride him up to that. A citation, at least. I'm his neighbor. Yeah, that's me. I need access to the roof, sir. Oh, it's over here. Roof access, please. Yeah. We're going to have to chase this guy down. I can already tell. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Really? Hang over McCaffrey. Sit You're down and we'll talk. Really? Get, go get, get, our wheels. get on the steps. There we go. God damn, Phelps. He's gonna get the fuck away, dude. See him? The goddamn you a gun. Runner, McCaffrey? Stay and fight the good fight. Get your goddamn gun out, Phelps. I caught up pretty quick. That's what I get for being in the military. Hurry, you can still catch Move, him. bitch! <laughs> she like stopped, she's like, hurry! Give it up! LAPD! Get your damn gun out, Phelps! Oh, yeah, there we go. Sack him! Sack him! Come on! We're right there! Yeah, come on! Boom! McCaffrey, you're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. Yeah, punch him right in the face. 
Son of a bitch. We need to get downtown and wrap this thing up. It's got to be the captain. Yeah, I think so too, but... Set him up. Well, uh, we're going to question both of them. Jameson could have done it, do you? Uh, whoever did it. It wasn't that Dahlia fuck. How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the Dahlia? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. If you think the list is exhaustive, Rusty, who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together at a later date. I'll hold you to that. Well, no time. No time. No time. I got suspects to interrogate. Well, you know, they never caught the Dahlia killer. So, it doesn't really matter. Easy! Wasn't paying attention. They never caught the Dahlia killer, so it doesn't really matter. But. Alright. Okay. You sure you can make it stick with one of these suspects, Jeff? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. Tiernan isn't one, McCaffrey isn't two. I want a confession from one of them. Will do. All right, well, first things first. We're going to go to two. Talk to you ready uh, to answer some questions. You think I have all the answers? Talk to people McC who run Caffrey first. We have something to hide. Touche, detective. Let's see where this takes us. Okay, alibi. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. Well, I don't believe you, because I have... You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. Yeah. And what do you have that proves I was there? Well, I don't know. Uh... Could be this. How about half of Augusta Summer's last correspondence with her daughter? What are you talking about? After you were done beating Evelyn, you searched her and found her mother's letter. That old lady's anguish amused you. I know nothing about a letter or Evelyn's goddamn mother. Yeah, well. So what was it doing on your writing desk? I don't know, but if I didn't put it there, somebody else did. Try exercising your powers of deduction on that. Well, let's go talk to Tiernan then. Right. All right, Tiernan, why'd you run, bud? Tiernan. I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. All right. Relationship with the victim. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Okay, well, you obviously do because you just told us you saw her last Lying night. To me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? I mean, well, McCaffrey's testimony. McCaffrey gave you up, Tiernan. He says he saw you go into your hotel with Evelyn. I met Evelyn at the public library. We would read for a while and then go for a drink. Last night we went back to my hotel room and had some more to drink. I, I must have passed out. I woke up and she was gone. What time was this? Around midnight, maybe later. And there's no one who can confirm this? No, there isn't. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Well... 
Uh, we do know she wasn't at the rail yard around midnight, so... Aristotle's Metaphysics, the book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it. She wanted something of his. What are you holding out on me, bud? We either hang this on you or McCaffrey. You better give us something. Well, McCaffrey's been in trouble with the law before. I know he that. He makes out it was some kind of labor dispute, but you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. Alibi. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night, and she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. You do remember. You guys went and purchased. You're well, lying, Tiernan. Evelyn went You've and purchased. You've been fighting with her. You fought, yeah. and... I'm not lying! She got up and left! That was it! Now, Evelyn went and bought you liquor last night because of course Robbins told us that she bought a bottle of whiskey for a boy after an argument which was you bud she left but she came back she bought you a quart of whiskey to make it up to you she told the liquor store owner you're in deep trouble buddy she said she loved me she wanted to care for me she would never stop talking about McCaffrey McCaffrey was a writer, and McCaffrey was a hero. McCaffrey cared for the little guy. Did you kill her, Tiernan? I might as well have. I kicked her out. She had nowhere to go. Access to the murder weapon. Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? Well, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. Well, then how did you know who get his hands on one? coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cruel. Is that your testimony? Alright, we're gonna... Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. A uh, big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was made from an old typewriter key, a present from the prop department at her old movie studio. All right. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. You're not in the clear. All right. So now we'll go back and talk to McCaffrey again. Yeah, the bum took a swipe at me. Put him down with my sap. Right, asshole. Access to the tire iron. We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? Yes, because of what Tiernan has just told us. I don't believe you, Grosvenor. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? Well, Tiernan told us about you, yes, making threats. You said you were going to put her out of her misery. Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation. That's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. I listened to him. And he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. Okay, fine. I will then. I'll go talk to him. Grand jury. Go. Case got thrown out. Now the DA wants my head. What am I using the phone for? Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, Detective? Hey, I need I the jacket the on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Outside. Just a moment, Detective. McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Convictions for petty theft. Dishonorable discharge from the army during training at Syracuse. Assault on a local woman. Says he almost beat the woman to death. Oh, shit. Thanks for your help. 
red squad? Damn. Okay, well. Back um, here. I've not said my piece yet. Well, no, we'll just talk to him, I guess. You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw. It changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak. This guy is the guy. Us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here. You have. It? Yeah, I. You. You have. You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? Because you have an assault charge. Your criminal record. We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge. Beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore! She tried to steal from my wallet. I could have fought for this country! I could have... You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch! What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers. So Evelyn poor, stole your book. Nobody stole your book. And she got what was coming to her. And that right there, my friends. Grovner McCaffrey, I'm charging you. Is all I need. Murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Congratulations, boys. You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot. Grand. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse, and neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot at the prison graveyard. Enjoy your lifetime behind bars, McCaffrey. Cutscene? Or are we just going straight to the new one? 17 out of 17, 14 out of 14. Vehicle damage, 685, city damage, a little bit. It was really that chase. <laughs> Gross Veneer uh, can write a tell all memoir from his cell on death row. There we go, five stars. We've done it. Uh. Cutscene, or are we just going to the next one? Military cutscene. We have lost most of Shaughnessy and Dunn's squad. His gunny is dead, first platoon is in worse shape. That medic is the crazy, the bravest man alive. Now we rally with the first, the try for the Nambus. It's sheared to the left. To the right, it goes right through a pass with two Nambus and Infilade. Mate, we can I lose everyone. Sent the lieutenant. Get back off this fucking bridge. They'll start walking the mortars back to their own positions. We only have I'm minutes. I'm in charge here, Sergeant. Get your men off the bridge, Lieutenant. What's your unit, Sergeant? We don't have time for this, Lieutenant. What's your unit, Sergeant? I company 22nd Marines, Lieutenant. And we just saved your ass by boarding the river. My orders are to reconnoiter the... I think that point is now moot. You have 10 men left. My orders are to save what's left. Move out! All right, well. So the Quarter Moon Murders, that's going to be next time on Ellen Noir. Thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all on the next one. If you're all here watching live currently, stay tuned, because Dead Space is going to be coming up. So if you want to see some Dead Space, stick around. Uh, otherwise, thank you all for joining me, and uh, I will see you all on the next part of Ellen Noir.